Hi, about six months ago I did a, a vlog about the Parrot and Naffy. I just sold a DJI Phantom 3 standard, which uh, I was using at the time. I also had a DJI Spark, which I still have actually. And um, I was taking it out into the forest near here, the outdoor center, for the first time, giving it a fly and letting people know my thoughts, or my initial thoughts anyway. Uh, it was the first time basically I'd used it, so it was all uh, a shot in the dark as it were. It was a learning process, I hadn't uh, mastered all the intricacies of it. But um, my first impressions were generally favourable. But I thought all these months later it would be a good idea six months on to say what I think of it today and how it's performed and am I satisfied with it and how does it compare with GJI? Well, as I say, I've only had the Phantom and the Sparks. Yeah, I thought it would be a good idea to just say what do I think of the, the Parrot and Naffy? Um, there it is. Nice little travel drone. I mean, it's, what can you say? It's the size is brilliant as a travel drone. If you look at it, compare it with a, G with a Spark. The Spark is <laughs> even smaller, but it's very limited compared to the Anafi. So on the whole, am I still satisfied with it? Or am I at all satisfied with it? Or am I rather underwhelmed by it? Well, it still gets a thumbs up from me. Uh, I like it, but with reservations, uh, which I've discovered in the last six months since using it, uh, I mean, the good points is it's, it's reliable. Um, reliable to a certain degree, I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, the battery life is fantastic. It's, well, it, they say 25 minutes. I mean, I've had it in the air 18 minutes at the most, um, but there was still power left in the pack, so yeah, it's great battery life. Um, it's very user-friendly and intuitive. It's very easy. The, the controller is not unlike a, um, a DJI Mavic controller. Basically, just slot the phone in, which can be a bit of a squeeze, actually. This is a bit tight, so <laughs> one of the drawbacks is squeezing your phone in, which uh, can be a struggle, like so. You've got to really force it, oh gosh, force it, make sure you're not pressing all the buttons and volume and everything. Yeah, so yeah, that can be a bit of a struggle, but once it's uh, once the phone's on, of course you've got to use a phone, you can't use a tablet, your tablet won't fit. Uh, once it's there, it's good. Uh, yeah, I like the controller, it's easy to use, I like the modes, I like cameraman, spiral, boomerang, uh, follow me, which you have to buy in the UK. It's about uh, 99 pence. So you think it used to be a lot dearer than that, but uh, with the DJI selling the modes, uh, including their modes for free, then I suppose Parrot had to uh, at least bring them down to a, a very low minimal price. Uh, yeah, I like all the modes. They're great. Um, I've used it a lot. I think I've probably used it around 50 times. Um, I generally make outdoorsy vlogs, van life, uh, climbing and hill walking and scrambling, camping occasionally. So it tends to be used for outdoorsy stuff. So you need a small drone like this. Uh, the Parrot, um, the DJI Phantom was a, in its shell case, was a monster really. Uh, it wasn't at all practical as a travel drone or a outdoorsy drone. So this has been brilliant, yeah. Um, what I said at the time, which I thought was a plus for the Parrot, there didn't appear to be many, as many firmware updates as you get with DJI, but I stand corrected there. Um, one of the drawbacks I've found is being out in the field and all of, it won't, all of a sudden when you turn on and try to fly it's telling you you need a firmware update and you can't bypass it. You have to get that firmware update before you can fly. 
And as you are well aware, if you're out in the field, miles from Wi-Fi or a good 3 or 4G signal, uh, it can be a bit of a pain getting that update or it can be impossible. So I tend to, before I leave home now, I tend to switch it on, just check it doesn't need any firmware updates. Because if you're out in the field and it needs a firmware update, then that is a pain in the ass. Uh, one of the biggest drawbacks I've found, uh, or the biggest criticisms, is um, it has lost signal occasionally. Uh, transmission. Um, you lose, the phone goes completely dead or the picture freezes and obviously if, if you've got no picture on your phone, uh, you're flying blind. You're not, you can't film properly if you don't know what you're looking at basically. And that has happened. It happened. I was in the um, yeah, the Brec not the Brecon Beacons. I was at my last vlog in Nor in Mid Wales, and I was flying on a mountain top. Uh, all going well. Took off fine. All going well. And then the picture it just froze, and uh, that is a pain. I had to bring it down again, and it's best you got to switch everything off, the drone and the controller start all over again and it usually cures it but um, it can be a pain so that's a bit of a drawback frozen picture also yawing i think it's is it called yawing panning where you pan around where the camera is panning around you're sending the drone around it does lose definition you don't as it moves across the scene it doesn't keep it in focus basically so you lose focus so you're not getting a pin sharp image. Uh, I don't know how Mavics compare whether they maintain that pin sharp image. It's a great image looking straight on but the moment you start moving it around panning you start to lose definition. So that's a shame but I only film in 1080. It's got 4k of course but I only make videos in um, 1080 so I've never film my old computer which I make videos on can't handle 4k anyway it, it freezes it, uh, so yeah 1080 I tend to film in but it does do 4k um, yeah so the battery life's brilliant it's very user friendly the controller is very user friendly it's very intuitive the modes are great uh, it's it's very handy size as a travel drone it's uh, a much better drone than the Spark. I mean, I, the Spark's been great actually. I, I don't use it, and since I've had the the Anafi, I, I always use the Anafi. I often take this with me because it's it's so small that um, in its case it doesn't take up any space in a rucksack. Well, not much. So I haven't been using the little Spark, uh, but I will use it again. I'm not going to sell it. I'll keep it. Um, would I upgrade to a Mavic, a Mavic Air or something? Well, certainly not yet. Uh, at the moment, I'm happy with the Parrot, and it's uh, again, it's a lot cheaper. I don't know what the current price is. In the UK, it was about when I bought it, it was about four hundred and sixty-nine pounds. I think I paid. I, th I think that's about six hundred dollars. They might have come down since then. But uh, it's been good. Yeah, it's been reliable. I've been generally satisfied with it, apart from uh, the problems with firmware updates out in the field and uh, losing definition when you're panning and losing transmission, losing picture, which uh, is a problem, especially if, you, if you're doing, a, say, a climb or a scramble using cameraman mode, filming yourself and the picture goes. But yeah, overall, great. So Parrot and Nafi, six months on, seven months on, still satisfied, still recommend it. Uh, if you want a travel drone that's a bit cheaper than a Mavic, then get one. So I hope you found this useful if you're thinking of buying a travel drone, or if you have one already, let me know what you think, if you feel free anyway. And uh, yeah, catch you again. See you then. Mm -hmm.